Hi, everybody, and welcome to this new session of Coffee Break with Edify. My name is Frederic Reverdy, and I will be your host today. So enjoy your coffee. All right, so let's switch to, uh, to the presentation. All right. So today we're going to talk about stainless steel inspection. I'm including also CRA, so corrosion resistance alloys, using Capture and the Gecko. Here is my email address in case you have any questions. Uh, of course, you can ask the question live right now. Um, don't hesitate. All right, so when we talk about uh, stainless steel, I'm kind of presenting all the type of materials we are looking at. Uh, so it would be some kind of dissimilar metals like uh, CRA, where you can have uh, a stainless steel weld, uh, inconel in that case uh, with carbon steel, and you may or may not have the inconel cladding. You can have this type of um, equipment in the nuclear field where you have a stainless steel component welded to a carbon steel component with an austenitic structure. And of course, you can have purely uh, stainless steel uh, components with, a, again, an austenitic structure. So usually when we do ultrasound for this type of inspection, we are used to use TRL configuration. So transmit, receive, uh, so they can be dual linear, dual metrics, or even you know, conventional dual uh, equipment. So I'll be using all uh, those today. I'll be presenting the Gecko, uh, which is going to be most of the results today. Uh, the links and links chain from our colleagues at Silverwing. So the links chain is kind of a new scanner for uh, stainless steel application. And you can also use the Panther uh, for this type of inspection today. <clears throat> so I mentioned TRL. So typically for phase array and uh, TFM, we'd be using DLA, so dual linear arrays, or DMAs, dual matrix arrays. So they are, they are pretty much the same concept. You have one probe that acts as an emitter, the other one as a receiver. So you can see here configuration with a DMA or DLA. On the wedge, you usually have a separation in between. So that means there is no, no wedge echo circulating. And that allows us to have shorter wedges so we can get closer to the closer to the well that you can have right here. Of course, <clears throat> when you have the DLA, uh, the point of crossing of the two beams is fixed by the roof angle. So you don't have the flexibility to kind of steer the energy uh, in the passive plane, but it is usually a cheaper solution. So if you know the thickness and you know what you want to do, that can be sufficient. Uh, DMAs offers more flexibility because you have elements as well in the passive plane. So you can really steer the energy of the passive plane, but you could be limited by the number of elements you can use because you have a matrix. So you have elements in both directions. Um, so typically uh, you can see here a difference uh, in the number of elements you are using. So we know that the more elements you use uh, with linear arrays, the tighter the focus, so the better the spatial resolution. And again, if you use a matrix, you are kind of limited in the number of elements uh, you can use if you use a portable unit. So that's why in the presentation today, I use a Gecko 64128 that allows me to use 64 elements for emission and 64 elements for reception. So I can use bigger aperture. So I can go a little bit farther. The, the near field is pushed a uh, little bit farther and I get a lot more energy as well. So here you can see a beam field calculation using uh, 64 elements, uh, 32 and 16, using a, a DNA uh, configuration. One advantage of DMAs, not DLAs, for uh, TFM. When you define a TFM, so here you have an inspection plan for your, for your TFM, your region of interest. When you use a DMA configuration, uh, the TFM is going to force the focus in the passive plane. Of course, the TFM is going to try to focus in the active plane, uh, every single pixel, as long as you are in the near field. But in the passive plane, the beam crossing is going to be the, the TFM is kind of going to force the two beam to kind of cross at every single pixel of the TFM. So there is this advantage using TFM uh, with DMAs. You can see that the beam are kind of crossing everywhere. Uh, so you are kind of forcing the crossing. Uh, when we deal with DMAs or DLAs with capture, uh, so the Gecko and the Mantis, uh, you can define fully your, uh, your, your uh, configuration on the equipment. So here is a uh, a DMA, so uh, six by uh, four, uh, sorry, eight by four, so 32 and 32. You can kind of change the numbering of your elements, so depending on how you fix your probe on the, on the wedge, so that allows you to kind of rotate your probe. Uh, and you have the most common probes on the market, and we'll be using some of them today. 
Uh, when it comes to calculating delay lows and TFM, so both of them on the equipment, you can do it directly on the on the equipment. You don't have to use an external software and upload like uh, delay lows. Uh, you can do everything on the equipment. So that kind of gives you some flexibility on the field if you want to adjust your delay lows uh, or your TFM box and whatever. Uh, you can kind of do that on the fly. So uh, in terms of scanners, so this is the the new the new scanner from our colleagues at Silverwing. So you can see the links. So this is the traditional links in the weld configuration. So you have two handles right here. You have the bar. You can put up to six probes right here, two in the center, two here, and two here. So you can kind of mix uh, torque and, and phase array. But here it is a little bit different. Our colleagues have added the chain right here. So you can take, if, if you already have a, a links uh, for well inspection, you can actually just purchase the, the, the add-on for the chain. And that allows you to fix uh, and use the, the, the link scanner on uh, structure that are not magnetic. So here, we just for the fun, we, we put a, a configuration with two different DMA probes. So the one on the left is a very traditional 7x4, uh, 2.25 megahertz. And the other one is a 16x2, uh, 4 megahertz. So you can, with, with a capture, you can kind of use different probes on the other side. So if I just use the video, you can really see here the chain uh, scanner and have a view. Uh, so you can use them for like a, you know, typical thicknesses and so on. All right. Uh, so as I mentioned, the Gecko unit, uh, the unit I'll be using today is a Gecko. Uh, so the Gecko comes from 3228 to 6428 with or without TFM. Of course, if you use a 32128, you'll be able to use the most uh, available uh, probes on the market. But you'll be limited to 32 and 32, uh, and a 64 128 will allow you to use bigger probes, uh, such as this one. So those will be kind of the typical uh, 16 by 2, 7 by 4, uh, but the 64 128 Gecko will allow you to use bigger probes, so go deeper, uh, send more edges. Uh, you can also use the Mantis, uh, so the, the little brother of the Gecko, uh, but of course, being a 16 64 unit, uh, you, you will be kind of limited to uh, 2 times 16, but uh, for example, if you want to do like a, you know stainless steel boiler tubes with a DLA, then you can do that with the Mantis as well. Uh, so those would be kind of samples I'll be using today. Uh, a lot of uh, stainless 316L uh, welds, and I'll be looking at some uh, CRA material as well within the weld. So the first one is a is a 35 millimeter. Uh, you can see kind of the the drawings right here. Uh, there is a, a weld in the, in the middle, and we have different notches uh, that can be surface breaking or embedded. And really, like you can see this one, this is only five millimeter, it's embedded. Uh, so we, we used a uh, large probe and compare like a 32 element aperture to a 64 element aperture. So 32 element uh, PAUT to 64 TFM. Uh, so this one is a five millimeter uh, internal notch. Uh, so it's not surface breaking. You, you can see on a 32 element scan, so a typical uh, DMA uh, configuration, uh, you can see uh, a big echo coming from the from the bottom, from the weld root, and you can see that you have a defect. You can really see the defect right here. Uh, it seems to be one big echo, uh, but actually, if you if we switch to a 64 element aperture, so I'm using TFM, uh, but I could be using PUT as well. You can see that in this region, actually, you have two echoes. Uh, the, the 64 element allows you a tighter focus. The TFM allows you to focus everywhere, so you don't have to worry where to focus. And you, you can see the tip diffraction, the top one and the bottom one. If I had a scan, you can also see the, the, the phase during inversion, and you can actually uh, dimension pretty uh, easily the, 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 the echo. Another example uh, here is the 10 millimeter internal notch as well, but closer to the, to the back wall. Uh, so again, with the 32 elements standard DMA, you can see that you have an indication, but uh, it's hard to tell, like you know, the size. So here, to me, it would look like a volumetric indication. With the 64 mini, uh, 64 elements, sorry, uh, you can see that again you have the same echo that you have here, and you have uh, another echo uh, lower. So actually, the, the 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 bottom of the of the defect was kind of mixing. With the notch at the bottom, uh, so you can couldn't really do like any sizing here. Here, using a 64 element aperture uh, with TFM, uh, you can actually have uh, perfect sizing. 
Uh, so here is another comparison of the standard DMA 7x4, 7x4 to uh, 21x3, uh, so a larger 21x3 uh, and 21x3. Uh, this, the well here is 30 millimeters uh, of stainless steel, and you can see, you kind of see the well right here, and you can see that there was a defect that was supposed to represent uh, a lack of fusion between two uh, welding passes. Here, if I use my DMAs, I can see the indication. I can see that I have uh, a defect. Uh, I can see here the echo. Uh, the signal to noise ratio is pretty good. Uh, this is 2.25 megahertz using L waves. But what's interesting using a bigger aperture for this configuration is you can actually see two echoes. I can see the similar echo right here, the one I have here. But I, actually, I, I get a, an echo from the from the other chip of the of the defect right here so i can do some some sizing as well we can see that the echo is kind of lifting and not at the right location and this is due to the you know the austenitic structure tend to to steer the energy a little bit but we, we still have a pretty good uh, sizing capability here using uh larger uh, dma so using a 64 128 uh, vehicle versus using a 32 128 PUT system yeah, so the cheeky fraction. Uh, the next example is a, is a dissimilar uh, weld. It's a corrosion resistance alloy weld uh, that I showed a picture before. Uh, you can see here the, the drawings uh, from our uh, friends at Sonar Spection. Uh, so you have carbon steel and carbon steel. You have uh, Inconel 625 uh, weld uh, using uh, GTAW uh, welding process, uh, and you have a six to seven millimeter of inconel clad uh, using SMAW uh, welding process. And we asked them to put, you know, like different defects inside the sample, some side ray holes that you can see them. You can see like a top notch right here, which is a 2.5 millimeter, a lack of fusion, a wood crack, and some defects at the limit between the, the inconel cladding and the carbon steel and uh, also inside the, the, the clad just to see if, you know what we can see uh using a uh, different techniques so we, here we use again tfm we use a dma at 21 by 3 so 21 by 3 emission 21 by 3 reception so uh, here is the wood crack so you have a, a wood crack right here and we kind of looked at the the defect from both sides uh and you can <coughs> excuse me you can clearly see here the defects on the same side so looking at the defect this way, uh, and uh, you can also see the defect going across it. So uh, I should be flipping the, the image, but you can even see that kind of a, a tip diffraction right here. So you can kind of see a corner here and a tip uh, a little bit, but because we are going across, again, the beam is still a little bit, so it might not be like the most precise, but uh, you can still uh, do some kind of sizing. Uh, the lack of fusion, uh, so going across the weld, so we can see that we are able to get a pretty good echo with a really good signal to noise ratio. Uh, we send a lot of energy. We are trying to focus. The, 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 the weld is kind of uh, having an impact, of course, but uh, still we, we can send a lot of energy. Looking on the same side, so the probe would be positioning right here and shooting, you know, with the TFM this area. Uh, I increase the gain. You see that there is a 11 dB uh, difference, but you can see again bottom tip diffraction and top tip diffraction. So we can actually do uh, proper sizing here. Uh, if you look at the size, it's 4.71 millimeter, so like 4.7, and the defect uh, from some aspection where they try to do like a, a 4 millimeter. So, so it's kind of you know it's pretty close. Uh, so here is. Uh, a crack inside the cladding, so I still have the, the well over it, but this is outside of the outside of the weld. The idea here is was can we detect any uh, any small crack uh, in the cladding close to the weld? Uh, and we do have uh, two echoes again, like uh, one which would be the bottom uh, right here, and one would be the the tip. Uh, so we estimated using you know, the, the tip diffraction echoes uh, higher at 3.4 millimeters. Uh, compared to three millimeters. Uh, so this is uh, still like uh, pretty good again. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, the, the, the other one is uh, we, we try to reproduce a lack of fusion uh, in the clad. So that would be also some kind of lack of fusion close to the weld. 
so we wanted to see if we can actually uh, detect it and size it. Uh, if you look at the TFM image, you see a lot of echoes right here, uh, kind of a lot of going on. If you look at the C-scan, it's kind of cramped with a lot of information. Uh, so it'd be kind of difficult to, to detect the defects here. Although we, we kind of see two defects, uh, two, two echoes right here. So one thing you can actually do with capture is in analysis, you can resize uh, your uh, TFM area. So I can take the full data here, but I just want to see a, a section of my TFM. So here I kind of readjusted my the gate of the TFM right here. Uh, so we only see uh, this part of the sample, and you can really see a big difference on the C scan. You can you still have some echoes here and there, but you can really see here the two diffraction echoes. So you know propagating perpendicular to the screen. And if you measure the distance between these two echoes, uh, you measure like 5.3 millimeters instead. Uh, didn't finish the sentence instead of five. Uh, so again, like we are capable of seeing some lack of fusion. So if uh, using uh, L wave and the TRA configuration. Uh, the other one, uh, actually, I used the pointer on this one. I should have used the gecko. But uh, so this is the the helium notch. So the helium notch here is only 2.5 millimeter. And, it, and, and it, the, the, the one was flushed, but uh, uh, would have been interesting not to be flushed. So here we, we are using a surface wave. Uh, and what we did is we kind of uh, looked at which element was contributing in the aperture of 21 by 3 emission and reception. Uh, and we generated this surface wave uh, using adjusting properly the frequency filter because we have a lot of filtering due to the, to the structure. So here, this is a D scan. So we, we are kind of moving perpendicular uh, along the weld, so perpendicular to the screen. And you can see here the response, uh, the A scan in the middle. So you can see we have a pretty good signal to noise ratio. Uh, and you can kind of try to size the, the length of the defect. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, any high information here, uh, just because there was no tip diffraction due to the surface wave. But we can clearly uh, see, the, see the, um, the, the defect. So we can have a group that would be kind of uh, looking for any uh, surface defect. Another example, kind of what I just, I just illustrated. So it's another sample. It's not the same sample. It's a 16 millimeter a thick uh, CRA material. Uh, you can see here the, the, the inconel weld, carbon steel. And the, the customer here had two uh, notches, so they were kind of big. And we also used uh, this surface wave, so putting one probe on the top, so one probe shooting down here, which is this scan here, and one probe the other way shooting uh, up. Uh, so here you have uh, the C scan, you have the corresponding A scan for, for the maximum. And when the probe is on the same side, we have a very good uh, signal. And you can see here the, the signal, the, I don't know how much that is, but uh, that's probably like a 20 dB. And you can see uh, the defect on the other side going across the entire world. You, you, you have some uh, noise, uh, structural noise due to the, to the weld structure, uh, but you kind of see it pretty well on the, on the C-scan. Going the other way, well, that's the opposite. Of course, uh, this one now has the highest energy because my probe is kind of positioned and shooting up. Uh, we see that we pretty much have the same uh, response than here. And we see the defect right here, going across the entire uh, weld. Again, we see some response due to the, to the weld structure. The grains are big. Uh, but uh, this kind of surface wave gives us like some, uh, some ability to detect uh, defect, defects close to the, close to the, the surface. Uh, of course, if you have any current, you can also use that. Uh, all right, so that's it. I uh, want to keep it short. Um, so the, now we can, I'm ready for, for any questions. I'm going to look into the comments. Uh, can I use TRL with a Mantis? Uh, yes, you can use TRL uh, probes with a Mantis. Of course, you can use uh, conventional you know, emission and reception. Uh, and if you have um, phase direct probes, uh, you can use any combination of 16 element for the emission and 16 element for the reception. So the DLA, for example, uh, for small tubes. Uh, or you can imagine like a configuration of uh, 8 by 2 DMA and 8 by 2 DMA. So you don't have as much flexibility as the Gecko. So I would say that you can use the Mantis 
on small tubes for small stainless steel tubes uh, that will give you like a, a more uh, cost affordable solution, but still pretty powerful with the same software. Uh, okay, so yeah, so what about using TFM techniques with DLA DMAs, including PWI, so pen wave imaging? So uh, you can capture allows you to use TFM with these probes. So you can uh, doesn't matter if it's a linear matrix, dual linear or dual matrix probe. You can use uh, TFM with all these techniques. And yes, uh, pen wave imaging is also available. Uh, so if you if you have uh, a DLA configuration. Uh, you'll be shooting like a plane wave. So the, 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 the roof angle will be important, of course. And then the, all the elements on the receiving side will be receiving, and then you will be doing a TFM in the middle. And you can do the same for, for DMA. So you will be sending more energy uh, into the part. So if you are dealing with uh, thicker structures, uh, that might be interesting. Do you think that using large aperture is always an advantage? Uh, not always, but we have seen today in the, in the presentation I've given. So even for like 25 millimeter, uh, that, that allows us to have a tighter focus. Of course, the probe needs to be close enough, but the advantage of using this TRL uh, configuration, we can have very short wedges. Uh, so you, with, with this uh, larger probe, you have a, a, this better spatial resolution. Sometimes, uh, if you know the th thickness, you can use a standard DLA or st standard DMAs. They are really good probes, so you don't always have to go uh, bigger. Uh, but I think it's, it's good to have this option and have this larger uh, 64, 128 gecko uh, allows you to kind of look at thicker structures uh, and sometimes do better characterization looking for TB fraction. This really depends on the material and the welding process. Can I use standard DLA and DMAs? Yes. So uh, when we say standard DLA and DMAs, I'm guessing uh, that we talk about the, the 16 by 2, the 7 by 4. Uh, so we call them the DA1, the DA2. Other vendors have their, their names as well. Uh, but yes, so you can, if you already have equipment, even from our competitors, uh, they are in the library uh, of the capture. So you can just load them. Uh, and you can use all the traditional uh, calibration tools like uh, you know the element check, uh, the wedge delay, and stuff like that to to make sure that you are uh, you have the proper uh, parameters for your wedge and for your probe. All right, I think we are good. Uh, I don't see any other questions. No. Uh, anyway, so if you have more questions, uh, here is my email address, uh, frepardy at edify.com. Uh, so don't hesitate to send me emails. And of course, you can comment in LinkedIn or YouTube. Uh, yeah. Thank you again for your time. And same software in both Gecko or Montis instruments. Uh, yes, it's the same software capture. Uh, it's the same for the Gecko, the Montis, and the PC version as well. The only difference between the Gecko and the Mantis uh, is the number of elements that you can use. Uh, the Mantis being a 1664 uh, element uh, equipment. Um, yep, yeah. uh, I think we are good. Uh, Jean-Philippe, it's up to you. Uh, so thank you and uh, see you next time.